Um, okay, uh, let's continue our lecture from yesterday. Um, during yesterday's lecture, I, we were talking about Kanu Maps. I had introduced you to a new particular tool, which is called Kanu Maps. And the idea behind Kanu Maps is that um, the idea behind Kanu Maps uh, is that uh, is that it is a tool which will give us the um, it is a tool which will give us the minimum sum of products. Let's give a second. All right. Now we also introduced you to a new concept. I introduced you to a new concept about another type of input which is called a don't care. So when you come to a logic circuit, you have a logic high or one, logic one, you have logic zero, and then now I want to introduce you to a third type of logic input which is called don't care. So either you have a zero or you have a one or you have a don't care. Okay. Um, is that all right? Are you guys able to see what's on the screen? Contrast. Or oh, is it white balance? This is exposure. Is it all right now? Is it better? Is it better or gone worse? Okay, all right. So the question is, the question is, when we came across this question, when we came across, we were doing some, we looked at this truth table and there's three outputs, X output, Y output, Z output, and we have to find the minimum sum of products. All right, okay. And when we were doing Y, we said, hey, when we convert this, output y into uh, sum of min term expression, it comes like this. But what is x? What is x? What is x? Okay, what is x? Right, so today's date is, uh, uh, what is today's date, guys? 27th April. And this is week. Six, lecture, two. two. All, right. All right, now another particular scenario, I want you to consider this one, another example. Let us consider an OR gate. You have input A, and this is logic one. The output will always be one. No matter what happens to A, whether you have 0 at A or you don't, uh, you have a 1 at A, whatever your inputs are at A, your output will always be fixed to 1. Okay? Right? How does input A affect the output? Well, the answer is. It doesn't. A is a don't care input. All right, A is a don't care input. So I, I've shown you what what uh, don't care is. So now we now come to different types of inputs. You have logic and what happens in hardware. So logic zero in hardware it would be positive, uh, sorry, zero volts. Okay, logic one would be positive five volts. And then logic X is either zero or five volts. This is known as 
low, this is known as high, and this is known as don't care. Now, let's talk about the Kahneman map rules. Let's do a quick revision. K map rules. Now, with regards to K-map rules, uh, number one, with regards to size. Um, the size of the Kano map, the size of the Kano map, this is with regards to size of the actual K-map. It has to be in powers of 2, so 2 to the power of n. So your Kano map cannot be an odd number, or it cannot be just any number. You can't have a Kano map of 10 cells. So this is the number of 2 to the power of n is the number of cells. So basically, number of cells should equal to 2 to the power of n. Right, where n is the number of input variables. Now, number two, let's talk, talk about the groups. Let's talk about the groups now. Um, the first thing, in order to get, if your, if your target is to get, if your target is to get the minimum sum of products, if you want to get the minimum sum of products, then what do you do? You have to group all the ones, right? So in the end, at the end of the exercise, all the ones must be covered, okay? All the ones must be covered. You can't leave a one uncovered. It has to be grouped. All ones have to be grouped. Right? Okay. Set number two. So that's the target. If that's our target, if you want to get minimum sum of products, right? You can also get minimum product of sums. How would you do that, guys? If you want to get minimum product of sums, how would you do that? Yeah, you group all the zeros. Right? You group all the zeros. Okay. All right. Okay, let's now look at some other rules. That's one rule. Now, number two is groups should be in powers of two. That's quite obvious, right? So, two to the power of n. Number three. Every attempt, every attempt at making a group should be to make the largest possible group. Number four, largest possible group, but it has to be an element of two to the power of n. You, if your largest possible group is a group of ten ones, that's not possible. Why? Because it is not two to the power of n. The group size is, can only be, obviously, it can only be group of one, size two, size four, size eight, size 16, size 32, and so forth. You can't have a group with 10 or 12, right? Okay. Okay. Now, avoid overlaps. Avoid. The word is avoid, but does not mean, does not mean that it is banned. Overlaps are not banned. Like we did some problems already yesterday, right? They are not banned, but we try to discourage it as much as possible. 
ok? Overlaps are allowed, but only if they help in making a larger group. Number five, um, with regards to don't care, can include don't care if it helps the group size to be larger. Can only include the X if it helps you in making a larger group size. But, but what is the catch? The group size has to be to the power of n. Okay. All right, let's go and do that problem. We have to continue that problem. Um, what, which one were we doing? We were doing, yes, we were doing, let's go back. Okay, we were doing this table, guys. Uh, what example number? I should give it an example number. Example 5, right? Example 5. Three variable kind of we, We've been given a truth table there. Three inputs. Three outputs. So obviously we want to get the minimum sum of products for this, minimum sum of products for this, minimum sum of products for this one. All right. Very important concept, guys. Kano maps. All right. Let's continue. Let's continue. Example five. Okay. So what we had come up with was, I'm just looking at it from yesterday, and guys. The way our lectures will run is if you've missed out yesterday's lecture and you didn't get the truth table, that's on you, right? You've got to quickly recover and get it from your friend or something. We won't be uh, revising the lecture or re, re -giving, uh, giving everybody a chance to write down the truth table if you haven't turned up to the lecture, okay? Okay, it was a function of y of ABC and then we said it's a sum of min terms of 2, 6, and 7. And then sum of don't cares at 3. So this is the way we write the sum of min term expression. All right. Let's now go ahead and draw the Kano map. I want to show you some concepts of Kano maps over here. The versatility of Kano maps. There we go. So what is it? A, B. I can write A, B here. I can write C here. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Look at my labeling, guys. Can you see the 1, 1? I repeat what we did yesterday. And if you were in yesterday's lecture, you will be finding today very comfortable. Right? So how do we label the addresses? How do we label the addresses? So that's 0, 0, 0. You follow the sequence. 0, 0, 0 in binary is 0. 0, 0, 1 is 1. 0, 1, 0 is 2. 0, 1, 1 is 3. 1, 1, 0 is, what is that? 6. 1, 1, 1 is 7. 1, 0, 0 is 4. 1, 0, 1 is 5. So how does our sum of min term expression cling to this? But remember, when we go back to our original problem, those addresses, the line addresses, are also corresponding to the same cell addresses. So 2, remember, sum of min terms is the location of where, what does sum of min terms mean? The addresses where ones occur in your system, right? So two, six, seven, and what's happening at three? This guy. All right. Now, in the first instance, in the first instance, I want to deliberately give you the wrong answer. I want you to note that. Otherwise, if somebody is not following this, they might not get it right. Let us assume. Does anybody have a pencil? Can I borrow a pencil? Yeah. Then what are you going to write with? Okay. Very good. Okay, all right. So, in the first instance, I want to show you if we ignore the x, right? So, just write down ignore x, okay? 
If we ignore the x and say, hey, I don't want to include the x, what do we do? We do that. Can you see that one group? Two groups. Right? So if we ignore x, if we ignore the don't care, what do we come up with, guys, according to the Kano map? We will have, what is this one? There will be C, what's common on this side? What's common on the horizontal side in this group here? Let's continue this group. It will be B and C. So our Y will equal to B and C, or what is this guy here? C is not common. It's A, B, right? A and B. Right. Thank you. If we ignore the x, our function comes out to be this. But if we include the x, if we include the x, what is the maximum group size can, uh, we can achieve? If we include the x, the maximum group size is this. So with x, What is the name of this, guys? Can somebody tell me? Okay, let's look on this side. Is C common? No, eh? What about this way? What about horizontal? What's common? B. If so, if we include X, our Y will equal to B. That's what X does. So, if you have an ex-girlfriend, only include her or invite her at your parties if she is useful. Right? Otherwise, they cause problems. All right? Okay. Same thing goes for you guys if you have a boyfriend. I mean, girls. Okay. All right. So that's what I wanted to show you. What X does. X can improve the situation for you. But luckily, in our case, the X was sitting here. Luckily, in this problem, the X was sitting here. What if the X was sitting there? What if... The X was sitting at cell 0. Would it have helped? No, not really. Okay? So, that's the situation. All right. Now, I want to show you another concept with regard to Kano maps. Right? Um, okay, let's do... Uh, we had three over here. Let's do Z. I think we had X, Y, and Z. Yes, X, Y, and Z. Right? We had X, Y, and Z. So, let's do example 5 again. Example 5 continued. Uh, let's do Z. Okay. Now, um, let me deliberately draw the Kano map in this way. Look at this, guys. I've drawn the Kano map in a different orientation. Right? I've drawn the Kano map in a different orientation. So how many variables can I plug in on this side, guys? How many variables can I plug on the horizontal way? Only one, because there's two cells. So that's 0, 1. And over here, you have your BC. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Let's now go back and look at... Uh, let's now... And look back. So, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, x. Okay. All right. Just make sure you have this on you. Okay. I'm not going to flip back. Okay. All right. So, I'm just going to do this. All right. So, sometimes you don't need to write the addresses. What I'm trying to show you over here is, right in the beginning, because I'm teaching you, I'm writing the cell addresses. But because as we are becoming familiar with the concept of Kano maps, you don't need to write the addresses each and every time. Okay, so 0, 0, 0 is 1. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 is 1. 0, 0, 1 is 1. 0, 0, 1 is a 1. 0, 1, 0 is a 0. 0, 1, 0 is a 0. 
0, 1, 1 is a 0. 0, 1, 1 is a 0. 1, 0, 0 is a 1. 1, 0, 0 is a 1. 1, 0, 1 is a 1. 1, 0, 1 is a 1. Okay. 1, 1, 0 is a 0. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0 is a 0. Last one. 1, 1, 1 is an X. 1, 1, 1 is an X. Okay. Now, So, obviously, in this case, in this particular problem, does our x help our group become larger? Is x, if we include x, will it make any difference? Will, will it make us get a larger group? No. So, the obvious group here is this guy. Right? If we were to include our x, if we were to include our x, what do we get? Okay, so if we, we, the only way to include the x is to put it that way. But that would make two terms because every group gives you one unique min term, right? So in this case, anyway, what is our form? What is our answer? Z is equal to what's common? Is A common? No. Is B common? I think that looks like a B bar is common. Yeah, that's a B bar which is common. Z is equals to B bar. All right. Um, Now, here's the difference, guys. What if cell 7 was a 1 instead of an X? Cell number 7. What if cell 7 was a 1? Then what would be your answer? In that case, in that case, if cell 7 was a 1, you would get z is equal to b or a and c. Sorry, b bar or a and c. All right, I want to show you... Uh, I want to get get into four variable kind of maps now. Guys, I want to show you one more item about a three variable kind of map, one particular concept. Let us consider example six now. Consider K. And this is another another particular feature of a Kano map. Let's use X, Y, and Z this time. You don't have to have A, B, C. Depends on what your system is using. Let us say this was 1, 1, and a 1. And the rest was zeros. Now, how would you map this? Obviously, this one is a key candidate. We can map that without any issues. How do we handle the one in the corner? Now, remember what I originally said. Your Kano map, even though we are drawing it like a flat table, in reality, you have to visualize it like a sphere. It's like a sphere. It map, maps onto each other. So, with that in mind, I want to show you that you can map this one in this manner. 
it wraps. Everything is like a ball. It, it, it wraps together. So this one is not the end. This cell is not the end. This cell is connecting to this side. Okay. Let me just show you on the computer. Here's a good, good way to look at it. We may be drawing the Kano map like this because on paper we need to draw it in two dimensions. Right? But in reality, the Kano map is three-dimensional. Okay? It's a sphere. Okay? It links to all the cells, they link to each other, especially the cells on the edge. Right? The cells on the edge, this is a high-dimensional Kano map. Right now we're just doing one by one, two by two, two by three, and so forth. But the point I want to show is the, 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 the cells, they link to each other. All right? Okay? So that's, that's the concept I want to show you. Okay, let's come back here. So because those two are linked together, a lot of guys, because they wouldn't realize this, they would have mapped this guy alone. Right? They would have just made a single map, a single group. They would have grouped this one alone and this two too. But you can make a larger group, remember. The objective is to make as large groups as possible. All right? That's our target. So anyway, in the end, our k is equal to, what is this guy? That's x bar and y bar. And what is these two? That's what's common in these two, this group here. It looks like a y bar, z bar. There we go. I want to give you another example. Consider for system H and let's finish off these three by three ones and then we go so we have X, Y, Z, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1 and let us say we have 1 over here, 1 over here, 1 over here, 1 over here. Now naturally what a lot of the guys would have done a lot of the students who are not able to visualize this, what do they do? They would, they would, can I borrow your pencil? A lot of the guys, they would go and do this. And they would say, H is equal to, they would say, oh, H is equal to, what is it? X bar and y bar or x and y bar, right? A lot of the guys would go ahead and do that. But that is, that is giving a correct, it does give, I want, to, I want to be clear here. I want you to write this down. I don't write everything down. I want you to write it down yourself. This is one of the system equations. This system is shown here. Remember, this refers to a, uh, a truth table. From the truth table, we come here, right? And from there to there. So that equation, that Boolean algebra, that, that expression, that Boolean expression is correct. The only problem, can somebody tell me what, pa, what is the nature, what is the thing that is not correct over there? It is correct. It is giving, it, it is the correct Boolean algebra expression. But what? But it is not minimized. It is not the minimum sum of products, right? The real answer is this one. The minimum, minimum is this one. We take it like this, take it like that. So the minimum sum of products will be H is equal to, what can you tell me about it, guys? H is equal to Y bar. That's it. H is equal to Y bar. Right? So both of them are correct, except for when you do the groupings correctly. If you make a mistake, so what, what, what did I show with this pencil and this thing here? What did I show you? What have I just demonstrated? If you make a mistake with your groupings, if your groupings are not optimal, then what answer do you get? Right? What answer do we get? 
Yeah, you get, you get an answer which will do the job, but it's not the minimized version, right? If your groupings are correct and optimal, the largest group possible, all those rules, if you follow it, you'll get the absolute minimum. That's the idea. And that's the whole idea behind Kano maps. Otherwise, we could have just gone to the truth table and just done a sum of products expression and just work from there. All right, guys, let's do a four by four. I think you guys are getting an idea now. Let's look at a four variable k-map. All right. Let us consider, let us consider if you have h of a, b, c, d, and it says sum of min terms is 1, 3, 7, uh, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 10. Right? Okay. Now, how many inputs, guys? Four inputs. Two to the power of four is equal to 16. So that means there'll be 16 cells. Set? All right, now. Look at how I label, guys. Look at how I label. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Over here, like, look at this side. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Notice the 1, 1, right? So remember, it wraps around, okay? Okay, now. Um, let's do the cell addresses, because this is the first 4x4 four four Kano map. 0, 0, 0, 0 is 0. 0, 0, 0, 1 is 1. 2, 0, 0, 1, 1 is 3, 4. Look at the numbers, how I'm going. And how am I labeling, labeling it? You just follow the sequence. 0, 1, 0, 0 is the number 4. 0, 1, 0, 1 is the number 5. 0, 1, 1, 1 is the number 7. 0, 1, 1, 0 is the number 6. Right? Okay, so... 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Notice how my 12, 13, 14, 15 is not on this side, but it comes in the middle. Okay? All right? So it's, you have to be very careful about this thing here. And by the way, by the way, uh, students, by the way, tell me, I'll ask you a very fundamental question. Where would this have come from? This sum of min terms, where would we have found that from the tooth table? And what exactly on the tooth table are we looking for when we, yeah, you look, you look on your tooth table and you look for where the ones are, the addresses of all your ones, all right? Okay, so look at the numbering, 0, 1, 2, can you see I skip and then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Why did I skip this? Because this is the 1, 1. So the way to remember it is not to remember is to actually just follow the binary code. The natural binary code leads you to the address numbers. So if you want to know that, what is the cell number for this? Well, all you do is 1101. 1101 is number 13. That's how it runs. Right? Okay. Or if you want to know what is the cell number for this guy, it's 1110, which is the number 14. And by now, all the binary numbers, at least the number 32 or 33, or 35 should be on your fingertips, natural binary. So if I ask you, give me number 24, or give, you, give me number 15 or 18, you should know, right, what the number is in natural binary, right? Okay, now, let's now fill it up. Let's populate the, up till now, that's an empty, empty Kano map. Let's populate this. That's our 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 10. What can we do? Let's see. Okay, we can do this group, that's a big group, we can do it straight away, that's quite obvious. What can we do about this one guy? Well, we can wrap it around from the other side, that's only one we can wrap. What about this one in the corner? Is it linked up? Is it neighbors with anybody? No, so we can't do much, it has to sit alone. 
At the end of the day, our, what is this, H, right? H will equal to, let's consider this uh, large group of four, that will equal to A bar and D. What will this one link up to? That is B bar, C bar, and D. What does this guy link up to? There will be A, B bar, C, D bar. That's our final answer. That's our minimum sum of products. For that. Okay. Let's do one more. I want to show you another concept. What example number would this be, guys? This will be example eight. All right. Nice. Okay, let's uh, do one more. <clears throat> uh, let's consider example number nine. And guys, there's some more examples in the notes, okay? There's some more examples in the notes, but I... My idea is that you have the notes, you should read the notes before you come in. You may not understand it. I don't expect you to be like robots and, you know, uh, memorize everything. There's no such thing as memorization in university, in university study. It's all about understanding. So you should have a look at those notes, attempt all whatever we've done in the past. So yesterday's lecture, you should have come in today having had a bit of a revision, right? Now, um, there's some more examples in the Moodle notes, right? I'm just giving you... Sub compliment. All right. Let us consider a system. We say Q of A, B, C, D. Check this out, guys. It says sum of max, a product of max terms. 0, 2, 7, 8, 11. How do we do this? And the question is, find the minimum sum of products of system Q. How do we do this? What does this terminology mean? Tell me. Firstly, this terminology, what does that refer to? Product of sums, right? So product of sums on your two table is what? Where the zeros are located. So these are the addresses of what? Zeros, right? Okay, and what do we call this expression? This is called the product of max terms expressions. Right. So, very easy. It's not too hard. We draw our 4 by 4, okay? We know that it's a 4 by 4. How do we know it's a 4 by 4? There's four inputs given there. Okay, let's put some address numbers down there just because it's our second kind of map which we are doing as a 4 by 4 kind of map. So that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now, tell me, what can we do with these addresses in relation to this particular Kano map? Once again, this is product of max terms. What do these addresses give us? The locations of all our zeros. So in those cells, you plug in what? You plug in zeros. Okay, so in those cells, we plug in zeros. So cell zero will be a zero. Cell two will be a zero. Cell seven will be zero. Cell 8 will be a 0, cell 11 will be a 0, okay. So obviously if those are the zeros, then what's the rest? It's going to be 1's. Now, let's have a look at this. How can we map this? Because remember, the question says, find minimum sum of products. 
So what are we doing over here? We are converting from a product of some expression to a minimum sum of products. We are going the other way around. Right? Okay, so what do we have? So we can look at this group here. That's a very large group. We can group that guy, one, right? If you look at this guy here, that's a large group here. We can group this guy. In order to group that one, a lot of guys would have just done that little one over here. But why do that little one when you can group something like this? There. And at the same time, take care of this one which was sitting out over here. Yeah, three. Anything else? What's, what else? Are, any ones left over? <coughs> yes, it does seem so. It seems that we have a one over here. A lot of the students would go and try and group that one alone, but we don't need to do that. We can group it with its neighbor. Any more ones left over? Yes, this guy here. So is there a neighbor? Yes. Why can't we do a group of three? That's not allowed, because it's got to be in powers of two. So we do a group of two. So you've got to be very neat in your grouping, such that you don't get confused in the groupings. There will be lines all over the place. So always try and use different color pencils or crayons or whatever you guys use. Okay. All right, now, let's have a look at this first min term. So our Q is equal to, let's look at this guy here. Let's look at all the verticals. All the ones which are vertical in nature. Let's look at this guy. What will that be, guys? A and B. All right. Now, anything more vertical? Well, why don't we cover this one, this group of four over here? Oh, this one here? What is this one? There will be A bar, B bar, and what's common from this way? D, D. A bar, B bar, and D. So we have done, we have done this one. I've just put a cross over there. You know, just so that I know which ones are done. Now, what about this big one here? One, two, three, four. What's common in that? There'll be B from this direction. And what about this direction? D bar. Okay, so I've done this guy here. So that's covered. This is covered. Anything else left, guys? Okay, this long one over here, which is going horizontally. When it's all the way, you can, because there's nothing in common on this axis, you just look over here. So it'll be C bar and D. So that's done. Last little one over here. What is that? C, D bar, and A. Have a look at what I've done. Okay, everyone happy with that? Anybody got a question? Okay, so this is the catch. Not everybody will get the same groups. Somebody may have, well, in this case, uh, I don't know if there's much room for movement or not. Sometimes there is room for movement. For example, let me give you an example. Some guys would have no, there's not much room for movement here, all right? If there is some room for movement, I don't know if we did that problem. Uh, we, we did that problem in the lecture, the previous lecture. Did we do that in one of the things that you can find two sets of answers? 